Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jagyasa and in this video we'll be discussing about the three intently related concepts often misdiagnosed in patients due to their similar looking presentation. So throwing light on the most common type of idiopathic inflammatory myopathies, we'll be talking about polymyositis, dermatomyositis while comparing it with another inflammatory condition called polymyalgia rheumatica. So to give it a better understanding, let's look at a clinical scenario. A 63-year-old man presents with muscle weakness. He finds it difficult to walk for long periods of time or climb stairs. Activities such as rising from a seated position is difficult. He also finds difficulty in swallowing foods. His blood results show the following. So after looking at this description and noticing the essential investigatory findings here, this man is a patient of polymyositis, which is an autoimmune connective tissue disease characterized by inflammation and weakness of muscles, usually symmetric and diffuse, primarily affecting the proximal muscles of neck and shoulder, trunk, hips and thigh. The lower limbs clinically to be symptomatic first. They may also experience myalgia and muscle cramps, making activities such as rising from a low chair, climbing steps, lifting objects, and combing hair difficult. When we look at the investigations in such a case, we need to know that creatinine kinase can be up to 50 times more than the normal, and about 20% have anti jovan antibodies positive. While the diagnosis is established by electromyography, it is confirmed by muscle biopsy, which is a definitive test. Steroids are the mainstay of treatment here. Coming on to dermatomyositis, features are similar to polymyositis except characteristic presence of skin lesions such as heliotrope rash present over eyelids, gotten papules present as patches over extensive surfaces of joints, and shawl sign as rash around neck. The investigatory findings include the presence of anti-nuclear antibodies here. Steroids are again the mainstay of treatment while sun blocking agents can be used for skin lesions. Coming on to polymyalgia rheumatica, it typically presents as painful and stiff muscles of neck, shoulder, upper arms and hip girdle with 15% of such people having giant cell arthritis. It is generally present in people over 50 years of age and usually present in women predisposed to autoantibody diseases. The stiffness of muscles is more in the morning, lasting for more than 45 minutes. There may be flu-like features at the onset or over the course of one or two weeks. Raised inflammatory markers are a characteristic feature of polymyalgia rheumatica, showing both ESR and CRP raised, CRP being more sensitive. Assessment should be made clinically for giant cell arthritis, keeping in mind typical symptoms of headache, visual disturbances and jaw claudication, while ESR serves as the most appropriate initial investigation to begin with the immediate treatment, the diagnosis is established with muscle biopsy. Keeping in mind the most feared complication of temporal arthritis, that is blindness, high dose prednisolone is the single most appropriate initial management which is proceeding over low dose aspirin given additionally to prevent the risk of stroke in such patients. Since long-term use of steroids that are eventually tapered off pose a threat of osteoporosis, bisphosphonates can be given. For the purpose of exam, this compilation may suit fit. So hoping you guys found this video informative and if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you guys. See you soon.